السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد my dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers today is a continuation of our topic the four tip tips for reforming our homes and it's tip number 26 no permission for the non-mahram in the absence of the husband first of all let me explain what is the meaning of mahram in Islam the mahram is the person whom you can not marry to the man those women whom he cannot marry sisters daughters so the woman that a Muslim male cannot marry, so he is a mahram to them, and they are prohibited and unlawful for him to marry any one of them. And also the male ones that a woman cannot marry. So here the Prophet Sallallahu is saying and teaching us in his sunnah that in the absence of the husband, no man who is not a mahram should enter his brother's house in the absence of, of his brother in faith I mean so no permission for the non-mahram in the absence of the husband someone a friend of your husband he wants to visit or he knocks don't open the door because it is haram it is prohibited for you to let him in and the sahaba they asked the Prophet ﷺ, how about the brother-in-law see the brother of the husband in the absence of his brother can he go and see the children of his brother and enter his brother's house in his brother's absence? They asked, how about the brother-in-law? The Prophet ﷺ said, Alhamu al maut The brother-in-law is very dangerous. It's just death. Why? Because there is here probability, there is a possibility for something evil to take place. Maybe he's more handsome than his brother. And you know, the devil is a crafty guy. So, because first of all, no one will suspect, oh, he's the uncle of the children. So he's visiting his uh, brother's family. And they sit together. And they talk. And they chat. And, and the door for evil is open. So Islam said, no. Because the one who created us, he knows. Our deficiencies, weaknesses, shortcomings, he knows that. And the Prophet ﷺ said, when a man and a woman are alone, the third person will be the devil. A woman is only thinking about him. He's good looking and this, and he is also thinking in the negative way about her. So that's why Islam blocks any avenue, any possibility, any way that might lead to evil. And one of the rules in the Sharia of Islam, the Islamic law, Whatever leads to something evil, something bad, it is prohibited. What leads to the evil is evil itself. So no permission for the non-mahrams in the absence of the husband. So sisters, take this into consideration. If your husband is away, don't open the door for anyone who is not your mahram. Tip number 26. Sex segregation. When visited by close relatives see in Islam when there is no room for the free mixing free mixing between the two sexes males and females because we know let us face it men and women together what happens evil no one can ignore this so Islam said yes we visit each other but there is a segregation there is privacy so my relatives, they come with their families, men and women. The men, they sit in area. The women, they sit in another area. Everyone has his own privacy. We chat as men and we feel free as men. Also, the sisters, the women, they talk to each other and they feel free. So Islam gives that. But if we are together, sitting and talking and cracking jokes, and laughing, and she is laughing at me, and I'm laughing at her. 
and he is smiling, I am smiling. And maybe he is more beautiful than my wife. Or maybe I am more handsome than her husband. And then when that gathering is over and the couples, they leave, they reach home, troubles are started at home. I was watching you, you were talking to her, you were smiling. I have also seen you and the problems start at home. So Islam says no need for this. We should have peaceful life and peaceful togetherness. So when we get together and see each other, everyone is separate. And that's the fruit. So maintain that in your home. No free mixing or intermingling between people, the opposite sex, men and women, who are not mahram. Tip number 28, the threat of having or taking private chauffeurs and maids. You know, the chauffeur is the special private driver. So, to have private driver or chauffeur, he should know and we should also maintain the restriction. He's not a member of the family. So he will not come inside and sit and talk to the family, I mean to the women, etc. And this private chauffeur should choose him and you should ask about his manners, about his character, about his ethical values, etc. Because sometimes evil will come through the chauffeur. Or maids, the maids you have also, they should have their own. They don't interact or they don't mix with the family. Yes, you have male maids. They cook or they do things, but they have separate place. And then the food come to the rest of the family. So there is no interaction or there is no free mixing. So you see, any possibility Islam blocks that avenue. Because this way, from this door, something might come, we lock it and close it. Tip number 29, do not allow the hermaphrodite to enter your house. This, you see, the hermaphrodite is a person who is both male and female. And some hermaphrodites, really, they look feminish. They talk like women and they, they are basically, I mean, look almost like women. So at the time of the Prophet and in the past, people, they were flexible. They were flexible and tolerant that those hermaphrodites, they would enter and sit with the woman, talk and chat, etc. Till one day the Prophet he saw one hermaphrodite talking and describing women in details. So he said, don't allow them to enter to your homes. We are going to have a short break, so stay tuned, my dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers, and we'll be back, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, my dear brothers and sisters, and dear viewers. The threat of having or taking private chauffeurs and maids. You know, the chauffeur is the special private driver. So, to have private driver a chauffeur, he should know and we should also maintain the restriction. He's not a member of the family. So he will not come inside and sit and talk to the family, I mean to the women, etc. And this private chauffeur should choose him and you should ask about his manners, about his character, about his ethical values, etc. Because sometimes evil will come through the chauffeur. Or maids, the maids you have also, they should have their own. They don't interact or they don't mix with the family. Yes, you have male maids, they cook or they do things, but they have separate place. And then the food come to the rest of the family, so there is no interaction or there is no free mixing. So you see, any possibility Islam 
blocks that avenue. Because this way, from this door, something might come, we lock it and close it. Tip number 29, do not allow the hermaphrodite to enter your house. This, you see, the hermaphrodite is a person who is both male and female. And some hermaphrodites, really, they look feminish. They talk like women and they, they are basically, I mean, look almost like women. So at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, and in the past, people, they were flexible. They were flexible and tolerant that those hermaphrodites, they would enter and sit with the woman, talk and chat, etc. Till one day the Prophet ﷺ, he saw one hermaphrodite talking and describing women in details. So he said, don't allow them to enter to your homes. The threat of having or taking private chauffeurs and maids. You know, the chauffeur is the special private driver. So to have private driver or chauffeur, he should know and we should also maintain the restriction. He's not a member of the family. So he will not come inside and sit and talk to the family, I mean to the women, etc. And this private chauva should choose him and you should ask about his manners, about his character, about his ethical values, etc. Because sometimes evil will come through the chauva. Or maids, the maids you have also, they should have their own. They don't interact or they don't mix with the family. Yes, you have male maids, they cook or they do things, but they have separate place. And then the food come to the rest of the family, so there is no interaction or there is no free mixing. So you see, any possibility Islam blocks that avenue, because this way, from this door, something might come, we lock it and close it. Tip number 30, beware of the evil influence of the television. Television or the telly, it's actually a tool. We cannot say it is either haram or halal, but the reality is that most of the times, what is being broadcast through the media and the television is bad, affecting the family, affecting the ethics, the, the manners, the morality, etc. of the family. So no wise Muslim or Muslima will say, having the television at home is good for my family, helps me to bring up my children, strengthening our iman, etc. No one will say that. So it's not wise. But if there are, mashallah, like this channel and other good channels, so if we use the media as a tool and make it productive and make it useful, then it will have tremendous positive impact if we use it correctly. But the moment we misuse these tools, then the fruit we reap is evil one. So that's why we need to take care and be aware of the evil and negative influence of the television. No children. For instance, children, by watching and seeing violence, movies about violence, crimes, killing, a child doesn't know. He just wants to do the same thing. So a child will become violent child. I remember a small child, he jumped from high place because he wants to become Superman. So child doesn't know. So you have to be very careful. So there are a lot of materials there which do have negative impact on the children and also on the family members. Morality. We have to maintain our manners and the moral values. So we don't tolerate immorality at all. Tip number 31, misuse of the cell phone, the mobile phones. 
Mobile phones is really nice tools, good tools for communication, sending messages, and, and many, many features there which are very good and very helpful and beneficial can be used. But to, subhanAllah, people, they sometimes misuse such tools. Now you can, you know, different generations of cell phones, you can receive materials and movies and things which are really bad ones. So we should not misuse such tools or the Bluetooth, which is one of the features built within the cell phones, etc. So use that tool only for do it khair, for good, and don't misuse it, etc. Also, the, uh, the cell phones, fortunately, misuse in some countries, and some communities, wedding days. The women, they use their uh, the cell phones, the mobile phones, and they take pictures and photos of the women, and women, you know, in weddings, they feel free, they dance, they uh, remove their, uh, what we call, uh, jilbab, and, and then the next day you see them on the YouTube. Hmm? On the YouTube. So you see, my dear sister, so much so that nowadays in most of these halls, for the wedding halls, they take the mobile phones at the entrance. A woman is going inside, they tell her, okay, you can go inside, but don't go with your mobile phone that has a camera. This is a sticker. When you come out, you take your mobile phones. Why? People misused it. Imagine your wife goes to a wedding, next day she's on the YouTube, dancing and singing and etc. Because she was having fun and, and thinks that the atmosphere is safe, and, but it was not. So this is an evil of such tool that can be used in a good way, but unfortunately people misusing it. Tip number 33, pictures of living beings are not hung on the wall. Don't keep pictures of living things, animals, human beings, birds on your wall and decorate your house with them. You can have pictures and of natural seas, seas, forests, that's okay. But pictures of living things, it's totally prohibited in Islam, it's haram. And the angels of mercy will not enter your house. And imagine the angels of mercy, they don't enter your house. Who will be there instead? The shayateen. Because if the angels of mercy are inside your house, they will be praying for you, making dua, supplicate. So your house will be shining. The khair, the good, will be emanating from that house. So the angels of mercy, they don't enter any house that has pictures. Tip number 34, no permission for smoking inside. You put a sign, no smoking. Your guests, they come to your house, they read the sign, smoking is restricted. Non-smoking area. Not that we go and buy the ashtrays, you know? We buy ashtrays for the guests. So we are telling them, giving them the green light, you can smoke. And you know, ask the doctors, the impact and the effect of the smoking upon the non-smoking person. I'm not smoking, but because someone is smoking, it is affecting and harming my health. So you are blowing these poisons, the fumes in the house. And the bad smell, when the guests, they leave, there is bad smell in the house. And the children, it affects the children, the little ones. And they learn the bad habits. They think it is good to have the cigarette. You find your little child opens a few smoke. In your absence, he will go and take the cigarette and light it. Because he wants to be like his dad. So no smoking at home. And even today, today in the countries, they make it a law. In public places, no smoking. You want to smoke, go outside because they realized the effect of smoking. No dogs inside one's home, as mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. You want to have dogs? Keep the dog outside, not inside. Otherwise, every day, every day, you will lose of your hasanat, your good deeds, one qirat. So the dog should be outside, not inside. Because if there's a dog inside the house also, the angels of mercy, they don't enter. Tip number 36, 
do not cover the walls with clothes. So those people who are well off, rich, they buy clothes and they cover the walls with clothes, velvet, as a sign of ostentation, that is a sign of israf, a sign of extravagance. And Allah tells us that those who are extravagant, mubaddirin, they are the brothers of the devils, the brothers of the shayateen. So we don't clothe the walls with clothes and cover them with clothes. Tip number 37. Choose good location for your house and beautiful designs. See, Islam goes to the details because as we said, it is a code of life. It is meant to make you have happy life. And the Prophet Sallallahu he said, three things will bring you happiness. And he said, one of them is the spacious house. Spacious house. So you choose good location for your house. Before building the house, you look for a nice place, nice location, and also good design. Good design, beautiful design, so that everyone feels comfortable comfortable at home because we want to make our homes paradise on earth tip number 38 check your neighbor before building your home because your neighbor is the he will be the closest person to you he's next door so i should know who are my neighbors i want to build a house but if the neighbors there are not good people bad neighbors I wish you not choose that location. It's a bad location. So think about your neighbors. So you check your neighbors before building your own home. Because the neighbor has rights over you and you have to be nice to them. And you expect them also to be kind to you. And also you should not have then later on troubles with them. Tip number 39, which is the spacious home as the Prophet ﷺ said, which is a cause of happiness. You have a large house, spacious one, that brings happiness by the grace of Allah. And may Allah, the most important thing, is to save us from the blazing fire in the next life. And may Allah grant us Jannat al naim and instead, and may Allah raise us up in the company of our beloved Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. Ameen. Ameen. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته